Good day students, welcome to MapGodServe.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. One of the steps involved in solving quadratic equations by completing the square um, is the square root property. So before we take a look at the whole problem solving process of completing the square, uh, we're going to take a look at that sub-step, which is uh, the square root property. Let's consider it within the context of an example. Um, let's take a look at this example here. Um, upon applying the completing the square algorithm, um, you end up with a situation like this. Now, how can we solve this equation, quantity x plus 3 squared equals 25, using the square root property? Now, the goal is to isolate x, okay? We want to isolate x. Now, how do we go about isolating x? Well, we'll work our way from outside, inside. We'll get rid of the square first, and then the 3. Now, how do we get rid of the square? We use the inverse operation of square, which is square root, okay? So, uh, we're going to, um, let's rewrite the equation. We're going to root both sides of our equation. Okay. On the left side, the square root and the square cancel each other out since your inverse operation. So we are left with x plus 3. Now, anytime you take the square root of a square, you have to introduce plus or minus. So we are going to have plus or minus 5 as opposed to just 5. Now, why is this the case? Well, if you square a positive and a negative number that are um, a positive and a negative of the same number, you will end up with the same result, okay? So that's why you introduce plus or minus because the square, in this case of five or negative five will still give you 25, all right? So this is one piece of the square root property that you do not want to forget. Introduce plus or minus, anytime you take the square root of a square in solving equations, okay? Now, the last step is to get x isolated, so we'll just simply subtract 3 from both sides, and we have x equals negative 3 plus or minus 5. Those are the two equation, uh, solutions to um, this quadratic equation we have here. Let's go ahead and see what they are independently. So we're going to separate the two equations, the two solutions along the plus or minus, okay? Let's put the positive to the left and the negative to the right. So on the right, on the left side, negative three plus five is two. And on the right side, negative three minus five is negative eight. So the solutions to this quadratic equation right here is two and negative eight. Now, how do we get a quadratic equation into this format so we can solve using the square root property? Um, in order to do that, we have to know how to complete the square, okay? Now, let's take a look at an example where we have to complete an incomplete square and then factor the resulting expression. So let's say we have this situation right here, this binomial expression x squared plus 12x the task is to complete the square now what term can we add onto this binomial to create a perfect square trinomial if we add a term that makes this a perfect square trinomial then we have accomplished our goal of completing the square okay so think about this as an incomplete square that needs a c to become complete all right so first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out what B is. Remember, you have an incomplete square when you have AX squared plus BX situation. So B is the coefficient of X, which is 12. Now, how are we going to complete the square? If you look at step two, we're going to compute B over two square. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and do that. So b over 2 is 12 over 2, which is 6. Next step is to square that, okay? So b over 2 square is 6 squared, which is 36. 
Now, what does 36 help us accomplish? Well, let's rewrite the incomplete square. If I add 36 to this incomplete square, guess what? I have a perfect square trinomial. It is of the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. How do we know? Because we created it using the b over 2 squared um, procedure. Now that you have a perfect square trinomial, it's very easy to factor. Okay, you can factor this using the x game, the box method, or you can guess and check. I'm going to use the fastest way of factoring perfect square trinomials. If you want to use a shortcut, all you simply do is you take the square root of the first and the last term and bring down the middle sign. That will give you the factored form of this uh, perfect square trinomial expression. So the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 36 is 6, and then we're going to add them together and square it, okay? So there goes the factored form of this completed square. Okay, now we're going to unite the two um, procedures we just covered, the square property and completing the square, in solving a quadratic equation. So in this problem, we are asked to solve by completing the square. The first step is to create an incomplete square on the left side. So to create an incomplete square that looks like um, example number two, we have to get rid of the C. How do we do that? We move it to the other side of the equation by adding five to both sides. When you add 5 to both sides, you have x squared plus 4x equals 5. Now, on the left side, you have an incomplete square. The goal is to complete the square, make it into a perfect square trinomial. So the question is, what c value can you add to both sides so that the left side of your equation is a perfect square trinomial? that can be factored and expressed as a binomial square. So that's the task. So we have to figure out what that number is. So how do we do it? You simply add b over two square to both sides of your equation, okay? So b is the coefficient of x, the number in front of x, which is four. So we're going to divide that by two. Four over two is two. Now we're going to square that. b over 2 square is 2 square, which is 4. So now we're going to insert that number into the blank spaces on the equation. Now what do we have on the left side? On the left side, we have a completed square, a perfect square trinomial. So let's go ahead and uh, factor that using the factoring trick we went over in the previous example, example two. You take the square root of the first and the last term and then bring down the middle sign. If you carry that procedure out, you end up with quantity x plus two square. That is a factored form of the perfect square trinomial on the left side of the equation. And then on the right side, 5 plus 4 is 9. Now we have this um, resulting quadratic equation that can be solved using the square root property. How do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, we'll get rid of the square with the inverse, and then get rid of plus 2 with the inverse also. Okay, so step number one is to get rid of the square. To accomplish that, we use the inverse operation, which is square root. So we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. The square and the square root on the left side cancel out, so you're left with x plus 2. Now, on the right side, we're going to take the square root of 9, which is 3. But the question is, what is the sign going to be? Is it positive? Or negative? The answer is both. Okay? Anytime you take the square root of a square, you have 
plus or minus. So we have plus or minus 3 because we're taking the square root of a square on the left side of the equation. To finish this up, we'll simply subtract 2 from both sides of our equation to have x isolated. If we carry out that step, we'll have um, x equals negative 2 plus or minus 3. Now let's go ahead and separate our two results, the negative and the positive, and um, evaluate them individually. So we have x minus 2 minus 3 and x minus 2 plus 3. On the left side, we can combine those two and keep the sign, since the signs are the same. We have x equals negative 5. And on the right side, minus 2 plus 3, we have x equals 1. So um, our the solutions to the quadratic equation is negative 5 and 1. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Um, if you found this tutorial beneficial to you, do give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it, the positive feedback. If you have any questions about um, any part of these examples or in uh, completing the square in general, just include your question in the comment section below. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.